podcast where we discuss philosophies, strategies, or whatever we want based around the fields of Yu-Gi-Oh! and life. This is a new thing that I'm starting. I tried to record a couple of episodes of, but they got lost in a very crazy, weird digital incident. Um, But this is something that I plan on doing weekly, be it by myself or with a person. Obviously, you might be able to tell that today it's just me and my voice, so if you don't like my voice, might as well click off right now. Additionally, you might notice just a poorly drawn image of the Sonic Duck in a studio and two stick figures around a round, poorly drawn table. That's because I'm not that good of an artist. And the purpose of this podcast is more to be something that you do in the background while while you are deck building, while you're play testing, whatever you may want to do with it. Um, additionally, you might hear some sounds of trucks and some heaters and fans, stuff like that, going on in the background because, well, I live in the trailer house next to the highway. Uh, Without any further ado, let's just get into this week's episode. The three key components about Yu-Gi-Oh! These are three components that will not only apply to Yu-Gi-Oh! but to any other card game or even a little bit of life. Just to go ahead and get them out of the way, so if you want to click out the video right now, the three key components are the deck, the duelist, and luck, or circumstance if you prefer. I'm going to break each one of these down as we go along. Um, Please forgive me if I make some passive talking comments because it's really difficult to talk to yourself in, in front of a screen for a good period of time and i'm gonna be drinking some coffee so please just sit back and grab your cards and let's get right into it the first component of yu gi is your deck now this is something that each one of us knows is you know very crucial but the thing is is a lot of times people misuse or misinterpret the idea of what importance their deck is so realistically, when let's break it down even more. When you talk about meta, okay, when you talk about what decks are doing the best in today, that is the deck that's going to be more likely to give you the best success at this point in time. Now, statistically, that's what's won. Okay, realistically as well, it's not just the deck that matters, but we'll get more into that. And each of these three things can be intertwined one way or another. But in all honesty, whenever you're building a deck, Okay, part of it goes, there, there's so much that goes in deck building, we can make an entirely different discussion on that. But whenever you're building a deck, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, I like this card, let's throw it in there. Okay, that's not how you should approach deck building. And that's why people who do approach it that way will be less likely to succeed. Now, I'm not saying that's guaranteed, but you're trying to promote your chances of succeeding. with When you go into an event with those less than 100 pieces of paper and a little box, you're trying to give your best yourself the best chances of winning that event. Realistically, that's the idea of the game. You know, sometimes we try and have some fun with it, but you want to give yourself the best chances. And whenever you look at these meta breakdowns, those are the decks that will give you the best potential chance of winning the game. Not to say that is the only case. Me, myself, I'm considered more of a roguish kind of guy. Not because I don't like playing meta. It's just because the decks I want to play aren't as you know, aren't going to be up there. Um, Now, this statistically, statistically, mind you, will give me less of a chance of winning, okay? That is because just if you break it down, there are cards that have been released that are more likely to give something, as a friend once put it, that makes your deck unfair, okay? What can your deck do to make yourself unfair? Now, the thing is, is that when you have these, these decks, you have to play test them. You have to relook them. You have to know what each of your cards do. Okay? And that goes into the second component of Yu-Gi-Oh! That is yourself the duelist. Now this is probably the most important um, key component of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and that is what do you bring to the table? What are you going to do with these cards Okay, that is going to pr- give you the success, the ability to win? There are so many times where people sit down and they, they're like, well, I lost to this top deck. Okay, But then there are also times where people will sit down and like, oh, I lost to so-and-so this week. Okay, It's dependent a lot of times on to how that 
much information that person has put in. If you sit down with the best deck, it's not going to guarantee you the best success if you don't know, know anything about it. Whereas if you have a person who studies each and every card, who has play tested and gone through these combos over and over, they're going to stand more of a chance of succeeding. Just statistically, that's the way it is. Not even statistically in life, but like realistically in life. That's the way it's going to be. Now, how do you improve yourself? Well, you know, you can play test, you can do some studying, you can read your cards, okay? But in all honesty, it's just going into it with you and yourself, into seeing what your strengths and your flaws are, okay? This, there are plenty of times where you can go with the, one, the same deck two different days and do completely different. Okay, that's partially because of the three the third thing that we're gonna talk about, but that's also because of your mental state. There are so many times where I've gone to an event and I've been flustered or I'm tired or whatever, and I've done poorly just because my mind is in the in that headspace. Whereas if you're going up against a person who is there to, to win, who, you know, got a good night's sleep, ate a good breakfast, they're gonna stand more of a chance than you do in those situations. Now that also kind of plays into the third component. That is luck, or as some people might who don't believe in luck would say, circumstance. Okay, realistically, if you let's say just a random random thing, if you stay up all night play testing, you don't get a good night's sleep, and you show up later to an event than what you want to, you might still you know do fairly well, but in your mind, your headspace is not going to be there. Whereas someone who's got the good night's sleep that we talked about before is going to be completely there at that event mentally and physically. Okay, let's say another thing too. Let's say a person gets sick the night before, okay? you Then they're really, really good. That would be potentially your first round opponent that you know you would have lost to if they had been there. But due to that luck or circumstance, they aren't there. So therefore, you stand a better chance of potentially winning. Okay, that's... that's you know, kind of a loose base thing of it, but that's how I kind of interpret the luck. Another thing is too, is there we we shuffle decks. Okay, whenever we are playing against each other, we shuffle each other's decks. We cut each other's decks. Okay, that itself is a luck portion. You are shuffling forty plus cards in a random order, um, and drawing five cards and basing your entire circumstance off those five cards. Statistically, your deck might not draw a single card 20 times in a row. But, you know, that one time, you happen to draw that card that makes your whole entire combo just shut down. Okay? That's luck and circumstance. There's only so much you can do to prevent that. And a lot of people forget that whenever they're entering games. Now, on the flip side, a lot of times people blame their circumstance, their loss, their or their victory on luck. That's true and false at the same time, okay? We don't need to completely blame it on that situation. A lot of times, it's just because they prepped better or it's because, you know, they had the better deck. It may not have been statistically the better deck, but they played it in a way that made it better than yours, okay? So we have to take that into circumstance whenever you're trying to blame something on luck or circumstance. Now, the way I like to look at this is, is Picture, if you will, a triangle, okay? You can even make it with your hands, put them together and make, make a little triangle. Now, make that triangle smaller, okay? Each of these angles are perfectly aligned with each other, okay? Now you have a, a triangle, now squish it down, okay? Each of these corners represents one of those three components of Yu-Gi-Oh! Okay, let's say you have terrible luck one day and your headspace isn't there as well, but you have an amazing deck, okay? That corner will be expanding. It'll be obtuse if you're, for those of you who uh, are geographically, <laughs> rather mathematically inclined, um, and that will be more of what everything is relied on, okay? The center of this triangle is victory. Let's just keep that in mind as it is, okay? That obtuse angle will still keep that triangle there and will still give you a chance of victory. But those other two components are squished and are so small that that significantly decreases your chances, right? You've decreased your surface area of this triangle. Okay, now let's say, let's say you increase 
um, two of those things. You increase your your luck and you increase you have a really lucky day and you also built your deck amazingly, but you don't know what the deuce you are doing, right? That's going to make that portion of the area of the triangle even smaller. Realistically, you'd want to expand this triangle to make it as big as possible so that all three components are in balance. Okay, it's kind of a roundabout way of discussing this, but that's the best way I can analyze it. Okay, the center being victory and the triangle itself being the components of this game. Now, earlier on, I did say something about, yes, this, this applies to life. Okay. Oh, man, I've got to take a drink of this coffee. I'm not going to do any edits of this unless it's something really crazy because, man, that's going to take a while to listen to. Anywho, I talked about how this applied to life. Okay, we're going to redefine these three things, the decks, the duelist, and the luck. Okay, the, the deck itself are the tools that you have acquired in the past. Okay, be it, be it a better microphone in this case, um, be it a high school diploma, okay, something as well as a college degree, right? These are the tools that are going to help increase your ability for success. Let's just use the analogy of going into a job, right? Realistically, if you are applying to become a doctor and you do not have your doctorate, the statistical chance of you succeeding and becoming a full-fledged doctor is going to be minimal, right? Whereas if you have that degree, it doesn't matter what kind of person you are, that's going to significantly increase your chances. Okay, not all of you are trying to become doctors, but that's just the example I came up with. Okay, now let's go with the duelist. That's you yourself as a person. Okay, let's use the same thing. Let's say you and another person who are applying for a job, I don't care what it is, have the exact same background. Like, realistically, you have both, you both went to the same schools, you both have the same experience, but they go in there and they really know how to talk. They've done their research, they understand what the the whatever they're they're um, interviewing for is looking for statistically they're going to have a better chance of getting in right and how do you yourself increase that well it's by being that person who takes the initiative and doing that research taking the extra mile that's what's going to put you in front of everyone else just like in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, whereas if you do the research on what is meta and what you're going to be facing up against or even if it's not meta, okay? Going back to that idea, even even if you know your locals, like you have the same guy who plays the same deck every single week and everyone else is playing this specific one, you build yourself around what you're gonna be playing versus like, well, what is everyone in the world playing, right? If you go to the same place over and over again, if, if you go into and do the same thing and fail every single time, even though it succeeds other places, you're not gonna succeed uh, most of the time. That's just simple as that. Now, the third component that we're talking about, luck and circumstance, okay, this is a lot of times people blame, again, blaming it on the luck and the circumstance. Say, I lost this because the other person was able to have this experience. They had a really good internship this one place that you yourself just didn't even have the opportunity to do, right? Part of the success in, in uh, life in general is the connections you make, the experiences you've had. Realistically, a person who grows up in a, let's say, in a family of doctors, going back to analogy, that analogy, um, a person who grows up in a family of doctors is going to st have a better chance than a person who doesn't. That's going to be their edge. Realistically, that's not the only component that they need, but they already have a head start on you, right? So that's their circumstance. Or their luck. Let's say you happen to, be, let's go back to the interview thing. Let's say you, you're applying for this interview and you both have two different days in the interview. One day, the person who is interviewing you had an amazing day. They just went on a beautiful day. It's beautiful. The skies are clear and whatnot. And then the next day, you go in. It's rainy. They just had a flat tire on the way, right? Their headspace is not going to be in your interview. You yourself could not have done anything to prevent that, to change it and make anything better. You know, you can try and do things to manipulate it. So like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, find their interest and in that kind of stuff. But they're going to have that better chance than you. That's circumstance and luck. Okay. You know, some people don't believe in luck because realistically, luck is based off of other things. So those are those three components and how they apply to life. Now, 
in all honesty, you might be like, man, you're crazy. What does this even have to do with Yu-Gi-Oh? You know, you can go to far more in-depth things, such as, like, the sets, you know. It's what's Konami kind of develops it in a way that, that you can, like, oh, this is how you succeed. is getting, spending, throwing more money out there. Speaking of money, speaking of, more, of money, a lot of times people blame their stuff, their lack of success, on financial reasons. Okay, you, su- you can succeed in this game and not spend a lot of money. That's the biggest misconception ever. Now, this isn't only like building your deck around the cards that you have, but making those connections that we're talking about in life. Making those connections with those friends who might have those cards that you need to complete your deck and actually play it. This isn't giving you any bit more of an advantage, okay? It's using your resources, using your brain, right? So next time you try and blame something financially, just just don't. Like realistically, I am I am 50 miles from my nearest locals. Okay? So I have to base all my stuff off of what I have, okay? But there are times where I've gone there and been like, "Hey, can I borrow the that's going back to the situation that is your resources, using yourself as the duelist, okay? Versus comp- that's compensating for that deficiency in your triangle that we're talking about. It's compensating for your deck deficits, right? That's using your circumstance, okay? That's using you yourself as a person. That's, that's just natural, okay? If your triangle is shrinking one area, you gotta do what you can to increase the other two. It's as simple as that. You can't always have a perfect balance. It is technically impossible to draw a perfect triangle. Kind of like it is impossible to draw a perfect circle. We have tools that make them very, very, very close, but perfection is one of those things that we ourselves can never achieve. We can just continue to try and grow towards it. Because there's always that, that aspect of circumstance and luck that's involved. Now, you might be thinking, oh, this guy is just blabbering on, right? He doesn't know what he's talking about. How is this actually applying you know, to Yu-Gi-Oh? Well, I, I kind of drew a connection to the first original series of Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, your three main characters, and you can argue me with this if you want, there's Yugi, there's Kaiba, and there's Joey. Okay, each one of these characters, whether intentionally designed this way or not, defines one of these three components of Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, Kaiba is the deck. Okay, he has access to any card he possibly wants. He has access to three, the only three existing versions of a single card. Okay, and he builds and modifies his deck, and it gives him success a good chunk of the show, right? Then you go on to Yugi. Yugi defines the duelist, right? He is the ultimate king of games, as they call him. He knows, he may not have as good of cards as everyone else, but he knows how to play the game. Okay, some people might say it's uh, the protagonist um, plot armor, but realistically, it's you know it's it's just a fictional thing. But it's how he uses that information and defines success a majority of the time. And then the luck component being Joey. Now Joey is my favorite character, and I hate that <laughs> that my favorite character is defined on just luck. But in the same sense, you can tell time and time again how he gets lucky and circumstances that just push him to succeed. Now, that's not also to say that each of these characters don't give, show aspects of the other, um, of, of the other three, or the other two um, components of Yu-Gi-Oh, but that's just what I feel their basis is off of. Like, for example, you know, going back to the original, original arc, okay, Yugi gives Joey Time Wizard, and that becomes his luck component that gives him, pushes him all the way to the finals. Okay, whereas, you know, Kaiba discovers himself as a duelist and, you know, grows humane throughout the the entire series. Okay, and Yugi modifies his deck. Like, he faces against himself at the very, very end. Okay, that, that might be, just me, be me nerding out a little bit there, but there is some validity to it. Realistically, you can probably take a good chunk of other shows and define people's success on those three key, key components or just into yourself in life think about it just take a moment and just think about which one of these you feel that you can increase yourself most on okay is it circumstance you know circumstance and luck is something that you can't always improve 
but there are some things that you can do yourself as the duelist or the per the person to improve those right your mentality okay increasing that luck and circumstance for that ne that duel the next day getting a good night's sleep taking a shower for crying out loud okay doing that i know i've said k a lot my gosh anyway this is a it's a new experience for me too <laughs> um so take those three key components now I, i've said it once i've said it a, a half a dozen times but just in case you weren't paying attention the three key components being the deck the duelist and luck each one of those go into a triangle that the bigger it is and the more aligned those those angles are the more success you're going to to show now that is it for those three key topics let me know down in the comment section what you think these three you know these three components is there something that you'd put instead of a lot of times people give me some suggestions so i was like well that kind of goes into this area okay um but it's it's an open-minded situation this is something that i've had for a while and wanted to make a video about and now i can and i don't have to worry about shaving before i do it um if you yourself are interested in being participating in one of these discussions it doesn't even have to be a list right it can be what do you think about um the sleeves the certain sleeves you know like how do you sleeve your deck okay if that's something you're really just passionate about i'd be delighted to host something about that and just have a tabletop face-to-face -face discussion be it mask to mask you know right now but i'm down for any of those so be, be thinking and, and let me know what you think this format of this style does it work for you does it not work for you i'm over subject to some suggestions and i'll try and get a little bit better when it comes to setting up everything my heater's gone off a few times my laptop has a fan that's gone crazy and semis have gone by probably about 15 times in this entire episode um so let me know what I can do better. And if you're an artiste <laughs> and a person who can draw, let me know if you can uh, draw myself a better picture. Now, I'm, I'll am i give you my entire budget for this whole entire channel, which is zero dollars. All right. I don't make anything off of this. So um, just keep that in mind if you're that kind of person. Um, anywho, I appreciate everyone for listening. I'll try and keep these episodes under 30 minutes, trying to aim more for the 30 minutes thing. But when you yourself are talking just to a wall, it can becomes a little bit difficult to keep things connected and, and pushing forward. Anyway, thank you very much for listening and have a great day.